it's spoiler in time folks this is the show where myself tom merritt and my co-host brian brushwood break down some shows we've been watching thanks to all the hard work we do on our other show cord killers that lets us find these shows and know how to watch them this week we'll be spoiling the larry sanders show the 14th floor and next stop bottom westworld episode seven of season three and the fifth season finale of better call Saul. that's season five episode 10 I, as I mentioned, am Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Doggone right. And of course, our uh, producer extraordinaire is Bryce Neshcom Castillo. Uh, are, are we jumping in with Saul? Is that where we're starting here? It. Let's spoil episode 10, season five, the finale of season five for Better Call Saul. Uh, how did you feel, Brian, about the way we have left things at the end of season five? This was a really good episode to the end of a surprisingly good season now if i say surprisingly good it implies that i thought it would not be good uh it was surprising because i couldn't conceive that there was much more story to tell between what we knew like in my mind after uh season four i was i was you know kind of uh, hot or cold on um but uh, once we lost chuck i was like what's the point he becomes saul goodman that's the end of it Wow, have I been proven wrong. This has been an extraordinary season of storytelling. They have found new depths and new crevices for us to explore. This episode in particular, I really loved the parallel because we saw two characters who we like a lot. We watched both of them overplay their hands, and I don't think both of them can win. We saw Nacho overplay his hand by using, thank you very much, a scam school trick to uh, cut up a soda can and to make a shim to open a padlock that uh, to let in assassins. Uh, we saw Lalo on an incredible uh, Counter-Strike Go level end run where he escapes, leaves the escape hatch open so that everyone could think he escapes, runs back in and just diehards all of the assassins, finds out that Nacho's betrayed him, uh, we, it was so fun when he is pulling the hatch down and you see him stop and then push it back up. And it, it, it was very clear, like, oh, no, I'm I'm definitely they're not trying to hide the fact that he means to leave that open. So I was Im immediately focused and like, OK, what's his plan? How what, what is he doing? He obviously wants them to follow him. Like, you know, where is he going to go? How's this going to work? And that was so fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but but um, one of those most glorious of gifts is it was one of those moments where I found myself crossing my arms saying like, all right, where's this headed? What are you yeah, up yeah. to? And it pays off. It pays off when you figure out, oh my God, he means to intentionally lead He's them. He's just going to run straight back. I did not guess that. Did yeah. You? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, also, uh, before we talk about the other uh, overplayed hand, um, I guess there have been some articles about, uh, uh, Bryce, you were saying that Lalo, the guy who plays Lalo, was like in the Mexican version of Jackass or something? Uh, that's something that I heard. And I know he, the thing that I heard is that he wanted to do the stunt where Lalo jumped off the cliff onto Saul's overturned car, and they would not let him. They but, had to like, use the. Do, do you remember that monster jump that he did down? Mm -hmm. uh, like, like, like it was it was a lot. He uh, did he did do the uh, the other jump where he smashed through the ceiling and killed the wire transfer clerk. That was him wow. doing that real uh, real jump. But uh, yeah, he's got he's got the chops, man. Uh, not only that, he's got that ultra. He's that he's that older. Be uh, awesome looking cousin that you had that walks into the room with that alpha male wolfish grin and just owns everything. And, and, and the more time we spend with him, I, I did see, I didn't read the article. This is what an old man I've become. I didn't read the article, but I saw the headline where Vince Gilligan was saying he's ashamed that he ever for a second had a doubt about the actor who plays Lalo because he's been amazing and I couldn't agree more. I mean, he's been fantastic the whole th time through. So, yes, so we have Nacho overplaying his hand, and it's very clear that now Lalo is going to know what Nacho did. He, Nacho's not going to get away with this. Uh, it, the, there's going to be a lot of suspicion uh, on Nacho. What's the other ha overplayed hand you wanted to talk about? Kim Wexler, man. There were two moments that, I, uh, that, I, that really hit me hard. One was there was nothing better than uh, Hamlin cornering uh, Kim and saying, Hey man, I got to tell you about Jimmy McGill. And especially because we've had this building theme 
of like, okay, well, what was a transgression before they got married versus after? How much is disclosure? What does he tell? And he finally gets to that place where he tells, you know, pretty much the whole story of what happened down at the border. And, uh, and, then, and, and so it feels like a tenuous uh, partnership between the two of them. And then Hamlin uh, corners her and says, he threw bowling balls and did prostitutes or whatever. And I felt that full tension and i was like god ah, don't don't uh, i don't know and then when she burst out laughing i burst out laughing it was delicious that moment that is just like this is my partner who i married and you're coming at me with what clearly was an effective strategy from him who are you even i don't understand yeah. and what's weird is it was delightful because I felt like in that moment, Kim and Jimmy were closer than they'd ever been. By the end of the episode, I was afraid because they were closer than they've ever been. And we've established Jimmy is good at Jimmy stuff. Kim enjoys the taste of dabbling in Jimmy stuff. Not very good at it. Uh, it, it, she, she's a spectator and mm -hmm. I am, I am, here's, here's my prediction as of this moment, Nacho gets away because of Mike Ermintrout. I think, I think, I think Nacho's in serious trouble and Mike Ermintrout facilitates their escape. Uh, right. And as, Mike as, kind of telegraphed that by saying he's not going to get out of this, you know, it's not going to be easy. So he knows, and he's preparing for that. We know that Kim Wexler gets disbarred and is working at a waffle house. And that's where, how we see her at the beginning uh, or, or by, by, by the end of next season. That's how Jimmy McGill encounters her is broken and destroyed and angry beyond words at, at, at him and their failed heist attempt to mess with Hamlin in order to get, because, because the motivations are different. Everything has been sport between Kim and Jimmy up until this moment. This is straight up. I would like $2 million. Would you like to commit fraud? I mean, if you're thinking about maybe committing fraud for money, I will support you as your wife. We've never, ever seen that from Kim up until that point, which tells me that's unforgivable and she will be, she will suffer a terrible fate. What's beautiful about this is things that made me wonder about Kim and Jimmy are coming to fruition in a beautiful way that solidifies everything so that I know exactly what's going on with Kim and Jimmy right now. Uh, back in the day, Kim was always like, no, Jimmy, you can't do that, which made me think, well, the ultimate fate of Kim Wexler obviously is going to be honorable. She's going to be the one who just can't go quite as far as Jimmy. But they also gave us those kind of confusing moments where they were where Jimmy was explaining the cons and they did those sort of harmless things at the bar. And, and, and Kim was like, well, we're not really going to go through with it. And Jimmy, you see, you all, you think, Oh, it's Jimmy who wants to go through with it. And it's like, Oh no, no, of course not. But what we're now, what I'm realizing now is that every character in better call Saul is breaking bad. We knew Jimmy McGill was breaking bad because he ends up as Saul Goodman. We knew that Mike Ermintrout was breaking bad because he ends up going from being an ex cop to Fring's minion. We didn't know Kim Wexler would be breaking bad. And now we're seeing it. Oh we're my seeing God. her getting a taste. We're seeing the growth of her character from no, no, no. Why would I do that to, you know what? That money is actually going to make it so I can do good. I can be a public defender. I don't have to work for Schweikert and Coakley. You know, we could make a lot more of that money and we wouldn't have to be involved in the drug trade because Jimmy can, you know what? Maybe we should try this. And I think what we're going to see next year, next season is Kim pushing this and Jimmy being a little unwilling and it falling apart. Like you say, she gets disbarred. And I think she moves back to Nebraska. Yes. Uh, which, which, which again ties into, you know, uh, uh, the black and white future forward scenario. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Now, I love your couching of each character as breaking bad in their own way, but we're seeing characters breaking good. Certainly Gus is breaking good up the ladder of success, but we're seeing Nacho breaking good morally in trying to get out. 
Like every he's fighting the currents. Yeah, yeah. That's totally. right. Because he because of his dad mostly. Yes, yes. No, no, no. And 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 regardless of of the cause, like. I mean, uh, uh, someone's dad being at risk is is the proximate cause. It's it's the excuse, but but it's it's the you know the 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 soul wanting to go one direction or another. Like Nacho wants out. I don't think he succeeds though, which means he'll end up broken bad. I think he does. I think mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. what what and and my evidence is we have two parallel stories, and my simple question is which will be more painful for me to watch fail. And the answer is Kim Wexler. I, I, I'd feel, I'd shrug at Nacho. I was like, well, he was in the game. But Kim Wexler, I just watched a toddler touch, touch a hot stove. And it will be very painful for me to see her suffer full repercussions of that. And uh, so, so it makes me feel, and I don't think you can get away with, with uh, pooping on both um in, in a way. I mean, with this show, who knows? I mean, I mean they're, yeah, they're, they're yeah. good at everything. Uh, one thing that I uh, that I'd almost forgotten is is uh, the end of the Lalo Nacho bit is Lalo forcing one of the assassins to report him as dead. Oh, that's interesting. In order to lure everyone into thinking that the mission was a success, and they stopped looking for him, giving him latitude to work a little more. So, what does that buy them though? Because uh, it buys Lalo the ability to go after Nacho now. Oh, like a like a like a hunt. Like, and yeah. he can find out that Gus is behind all of this because right yeah. now he doesn't get to know about Gus. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So based on, yeah. Okay. So, so it's like a poison seed of information that he puts out there. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on uh, better call Saul? It's beautiful. The cinematography on there, the location shoots, the composition, um, of uh, background focus, you know, like uh, uh, at Lalo's compound, the way they have the uh, the uplight on all the trees and everything, every shot is perfectly balanced that to feel big and luxurious and um, not at all dated, even though this takes place nearly 20 years ago. Um, it's it's extraordinary. It, it deserves all the praise that this series gets. I did think it was goofy lalo shooting down the tunnel with one hand upside down arm dangling down yeah but i thought that was a I, goofiness that the show normally doesn't do didn't feel very goofy to the guys getting shot did it bryce <laughs> I, but but it did effectively <laughs> convey that from a position of safety he was able to slaughter everyone sure. uh but but you're right i agree it was it was a bit like uh 80s action movie like eh, just sweep left and say right. hello to my fine. little friend yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> uh all right that's better call saul season five episode 10 let's spoil westworld season three episode seven past pawn that's p-a-s-s-e-d p-a-w-n uh and which we finally get the uh the storylines merge uh, we, we see Maeve at the beginning, uh, Brian, you, uh, you get to see Clementine as well as Hunter, uh, return. And then, uh, they all head out into Mexican desert to Sonora, uh, to the original place where we find out Caleb's backstory. And we also see the epic fight between Maeve and Dolores and everyone loved this episode. I can tell looking at Brian's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I'm, I'm tempted to not even speak. I mean, can somebody who is not me, because I, I have a reputation by now. I gotta say, okay, look, I think we, I think Westworld season one and season two have gained a, it is kind of, it, we, we kind of said, okay, this is going to be a very heady, very wacky kind of trippy show, right? We're really going to play a lot with you know existence and and life forms you know that the ranking of life forms and we're going to play around with the storytelling and stuff and season three has really become has really become like an fx quality action show we are really i, I feel like this i there's a lot of high tech stuff going on but it feels very dumbed down to me. And I feel like I can't, I can't shake that since episode two or three of the season that they have really almost dumbed down the show. Like in lieu of simplifying it, which I think would have been very helpful if you consider season one and two very convoluted. I don't think season three is simplified. I think it is, they've rubbed off all of the sharp points on it and it's, it's become kind of, dull in its in its story plot tom am i it, it's interesting that you say that because 
Maybe I'm too dumb to have realized that earlier in the season, (laughs) but I definitely felt it this episode. This was the episode where, you know, Dolores is telling uh, Caleb and it's, it's beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. The acting is tremendous. I am captivated uh, by, by both of the actors, but I'm listening to the dialogue and I'm like, really? Like, I've decided that a human must run our empire and I'm only doing this to protect the humans. Like that just seemed oversimplified. Uh, I dug the battle between Maeve and Dolores. I thought that was, that was really well done. Well choreographed, uh, fun to watch uh, Dolores getting her arm blown off and all that. And the tech, they both had like cool tech, but then also it was like cool tech without an explanation. Like this drone helps these bullets find their targets. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, I guess I can this, hang with that. This sniper rifle has aim assist, which is a real thing. Yeah. But also it will shoot it will just shoot on its own. It can it just It will just shoot anybody it's just, it's that just, it needs to. Yeah. I mean, it's like uh, yes, we get it. We all saw the late nineties discovery special about this yeah. tech about it being around the corner. And so and then the, my final my final thing that I felt was really dumbed down was the 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 evil computer in the basement that they just <laughs> left on. Uh and and for, it's years. Like, for yeah. years. And, and they, they guarded they it by just, how many people Tom? How many people were guarding Solomon? None. Were there, well, were there four? Oh, I guess there were four inside. There was four inside. Oh, that's right. Because the gun shot them at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Just um, like it was, it was up. on, and it was evil, and and Dolores's secret plan is to get it to tell us what to do so that Caleb can become the chosen one. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I didn't dig any of that. Also. I guess you can have an EMP where the the stored strategy doesn't get affected, but that that also seemed weird. I liked the battle between Maeve and Dolores for the most part. I liked Caleb's backstory. I liked the idea that uh, he he had been you know employed by the Rico app, uh, and that they they didn't want him to remember that, and that kind of manifested in him like, yeah, I don't take certain kinds of jobs. That all jived with me, and I. I I, th- I thought the way they told it with the with the multiple flashbacks worked fine enough for me. So it was, this wasn't a total loss, but I'm with you, Bryce. Like so much of it felt way simpler than it needed to be. Mm-hmm. Every single part of this show is best of breed, best of breed acting, best of breed writing ish uh best of breeds uh special effects best of breed music best of breed world building and yet somehow never more than in this episode did the sum did, did more clearly the sum is less than its parts put all those parts together and somehow it's less on there there was one character there was one anchor that i believed was concrete until this episode all the robots, whatever, make up whatever you want. Make as many copies as you want. They come, they go, they're alive, they're dead. Anything's possible. Robots, right? Humans, great. They come, they go, I guess. You make copies, I guess. They have breakthroughs or whatever. Caleb was the one concrete introduction that we had this season that was really good because he was damaged and I believed it. And it turns out I couldn't even believe in that. I don't know what we're fighting for. I don't know who we're fighting against. I don't know who's dead, who's alive, who can't come back, who can come back. Mm -hmm. I don't know a goddamn thing. And when I'm in this space, I don't understand who to root for or what to care about. It's a Transformers movie at this point. Yeah, I mean, this this episode started with Hale making a phone call and we see that she still has a face despite the very end of the last episode where saying, she is clearly burned off is she, right uh and well, i mean maybe she's she been repaired she fixed. i guess but then like why did they set the bomb they they bombed her because they knew she was the robot they wouldn't they know that the robot can be not exploded also who are we supposed to cheer for when it's darth vader killing the other copy of darth vader who's slightly different than the first darth vader i don't i mean i, 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 I hold, think, hold on oh, put a put yeah. a pin in the who do we cheer for because i i want to throw out one last thing uh is hmm. that we also have william who we spent a lot of time uh establishing that he's had a revelation and he knows what he wants to do and then we find out that once he wants what he wants to do is kill all robots but he won't kill Bernard and Ashley right away. He'll wait till he's at a gas station. But he will say, I'm going to kill you first. You should have killed me when yes, you had the chance, but partner. not until I get to the gas station. Like, <clears throat> <laughs> Okay. Now, the thing that makes me not... I am I am rarely as confused as to who to root for because I don't really care. I, I don't view these things as good versus evil. I'm, I'm looking at other things. But 
What I think we are supposed to end up with is that Dolores is manipulating Caleb because there's the line of she wants to use humans to kill all humans, which then if you just bracket off the weirdness of the evil robot AI there or the evil AI, then yes, what she wants to do is get a flawed plan, trick Caleb into implementing that plan. And then that will ruin everything, leaving a, uh, a fresh earth for Dolores to go get everyone out of the valley uh, and put them into real bodies and, and the robots inherit the earth. That's kind of what I suspect is supposed to be Dolores's real plan, in which case I guess I'm, if I'm going to root, I'm going to root against Dolores's plan working and hope that Caleb wises up. Yeah, I mean, I guess the idea is, right, like, see, we, we were talking before the show that a lot of this is about, like, robots are going to be an inevitability. Technology is an inevitability, and they already have this, and... They have proved that the robots are an evolved life form, basically. And you either try to wipe them out, which I think is William's plan, which is, you know, rowing upstream forever, um, versus, you know, uh, uh, Dolores' plan, which is to try to kill all humans. And I think Caleb is meant to be this compromise of, we robots and humans can live together or the robots can kill all of the humans and you can be the king of the humans when we create the the robot nato and there and was like that direct together. implication that it's like you've been a follower your whole life now, now it's you time get to, to lead. be a leader right and it's like uh, against well i think she was end. just trying to convince him to do the plan i don't think she wants him to be the king of humans she wants them all dead she mm. never cared about caleb i always thought it was weird that she took a human under her wing and now I get it. Like, oh, the, the only thing that makes sense for Dolores to protect a human of any kind would be to use him for this kind of plan. So I, I, I'm i gonna try to speak non-spoilery for anyone who hasn't seen Game of Thrones. There's a lot of characters you like and don't like in Game of Thrones. There's a lot of situations you find horrific and enjoy in Game of Thrones. But I can't think of a single episode during all seven seasons of that show where you ever lacked an anchor where there wasn't at least one character that you understood where they were coming from, what they were about, what, and, and you could relate to. And, and for a, an awful lot of it, it was, um, uh, uh, uh the young Stark, Arya, uh, uh, and, and sometimes it was not Arya. Sometimes we didn't like what Arya did. Um, I lost any anchor. I don't like any of them. I don't understand any of their motives. I don't want to spend any time with them. I don't like anything. I, 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 I dread watching the next episode of this. Series. I actually feel, I feel like I understand Dolores's motives better if I'm right about her using Caleb because she's always been robots, Uber Alice. like, you know, since, since she kind of understood what was going on and it was weird that she was using Caleb. That's when I started to weaken on like, okay, maybe her motivations are, are growing or not so pure now i get it now i get that she's all she's she hasn't lost anything so to, to me you have a more solid motivation from dolores now if that's true right and and her means to do so are to destroy reboaham you know to to cripple uh human society which had been held up by the big ball the big glowing ball um but i feel like that I don't know that it, it, it just seems very almost one dimensional when it comes to her relationship with Caleb. I mean, the only reason they even got together, despite the fact that he is one of the hundred some people on the planet who is an outlier, outlier. Uh, he just happened to be there in the alley that night. And I don't think Reboaham, Reboaham had no clue that uh that Dolores even existed so it's not like yeah. Reboaham sent him there and put this all together so it's one of those weird things where it's not like but fate. she it's might have known that that's where he would end up because she had visited before and it had started to tap into that I guess and infil so. infiltrated the company but she was shot she uh, may, may maybe I, I I think it's not crazy it's that she would have seen shaky. him and, yeah. and vetted him but uh hmm Oftentimes, really great art is, in a very clever way, speaking about the times that you live in. Uh, sometimes in a not clever way. You know, 24 was popular because we wanted revenge fantasy porn of, you know, beating up and torturing terrorists or whatever. But it was about something bigger than the show itself. 
for the life of me, I don't know what this show's about that's bigger than oh, the show. Oh, it's, so. it's about big data. It's, a, it's about uh, big data and AI and automation and uh, can humanity uh, persist in the face of technology when the company's the... I mean, that that is the, what this is supposed to be the, about. Very that, clearly about that. In that case, I don't I know would if love, I like how blunt they are about it. Well, it seems too obvious. It's just, it's just all telling and no showing. I would love to see a story that makes me feel the pain of what might be around the corner with big data. Likewise, th 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 I think that's th why th think I about reacted Caleb's, so uh, uh, I think that's friend. why I reacted so badly to the saying like, we now sent everybody what their plan was and they all freaked out. Cause I'm, I didn't feel it. I was yeah. like, okay, cause they didn't why? show give, it. Give me, Man, like, yeah. Show me could you someone imagine, could you imagine that, if that convinces episode, me that I would freak out. Imagine that episode as, as five nine minute short mm -hmm. stories of individuals who all had understood, yeah, yeah. you know, who had reasonable secrets that they were keeping and how it destroyed them to have it. Like what, like, like make me feel any of that. Like, like, here's the thing we've known about Caleb's partner that he's been so upset and met broken about that. Like, I can't tell you the dude's name. They never gave us one vignette that made me think, I like that guy. For one second, let me feel what Caleb feels, you know, like like make this person somebody who I at least like, if not love. I thought love. they did a decent job with Caleb. I, I, I personally wouldn't pick on that uh, because cause I, I don't, I think you could overexpose that. I think it's pretty, a, pr a pretty well-worn story of like, hey, I had a brother in arms and he's gone and I'm, mad, and I'm upset about it. And I, I definitely felt Caleb's. That's that's actually one of the problems is that now they've suddenly ripped away what I had learned about that. And I, I should be very I should be even angrier that that was never real and that he killed his own friend. But again, I'm sort of like not believing it because I've been led to not believe that everything I'm I've so seen glad. is true too I'm much. So, oh, my God. Yeah, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. A dog will learn the rules. And the rules with Westworld are mm -hmm. whatever you care about now, whatever you believe now will not matter in four episodes. We yeah, have been my dogs are saying. completely Definitely. trained and, and that's not a great thing to train your audience to, to understand. Well, it's, I think it's meant to be like, Oh, twists. Like you are yeah. meant to be surprised, of course, but it's not doing a good, like if you, if the whole, if the whole, t maybe there's more to it next week because we haven't explored any th any of the stuff about France being nuked. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think it's meant to be surprised. But if the only surprise is supposed to be, hey, Caleb, you know the guy Caleb who we keep looking at the one memories over and over and over and over again and the same thing. I, I don't really, I, I, I don't know about this anchor stuff, but I, the, the the guy who we keep seeing just kind of randomly his memories of being in war, that memory's fake. What? What? No. What? That's that's not even a good that's not even fundamentally a good twist. <laughs> it's, it's, well, especially in a world where it's like, what? In a world where literally we've seen story and story again turn out to be untrue. <laughs> this story was untrue as well. What? Because I think the like Caleb, Caleb already doesn't have a lot of depth. And even if you replace one for one, the, the army thing with the, the contract killer thing, like he has two data points which which were uh this this thing with his his brother in arm and his mom uh what leaving dying the milkshake in, yeah the milkshake thing he threw up a milkshake once at end of caleb's backstory he's not he's not exactly they have given more backstory to the robots who uh just spent an eternity being killed and maimed and and assaulted uh and at least that's a motivation. That's a motivation. I, I, I disagree I with you on Caleb. I, I'm feeling okay. Caleb, and I, I like sure. what they've done with him. But that doesn't excuse all of it. Uh, and 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 I, I'm also having problems. This I've been digging Westworld with a couple of exceptions all through this season. I, I've I've liked the I've liked everything about it until this episode. This episode just struck a, a clunker note for me. Right from the moment where Dolores said, I want you to be king, human guy. I'm like, no, she doesn't. <laughs> like, no, I don't believe that. Like, why would she want that? And then I find, and then it, I may be going to be given a legitimate reason why she would say that and not mean it. And I really hope I am. I hope I'm right. I'm also not sure I'm right. And that's part of the problem is not, it's not a good uncertainty. Uncertainty is good. You don't want certainty, but it's not a, an uncertainty of like, Ooh, I can't wait to find out what happens. It's like, gosh, I, I hope I am understanding this correctly. Cause if I'm not, it doesn't make sense. That's a bad uncertainty. Um, it's, uh, 
uh, I don't want to keep comparing, whatever, but uh, uh, say what you will about um, uh, Game of Thrones and how it ended. But when somebody died on that show, I believed it. Mm. I never crossed my but arms what and is, said, we'll see. What does death mean to the not living? Nothing in this not world. Not everybody I mean, who I, I, died I, on that show stayed dead even, and that, you still believed it. Right, but, but I believe that person as I knew them was truly right. dead, you know? Um. Yeah. Well, we can't really get into spoilers, yeah, but I, I get. What, I think I get what you're saying. Um. <laughs> so, how's your hand from petting that snake, Brian? <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's a little bit snake bit. Uh, but I, I knew it. It's fine. It's not like it's, it's asking got, a lot. That's got a rubber band around it. Is it'll be all right. Um, it's nice that at least with the story being dumb, it's not like it's asking a lot or making you just like really process this. You know, at least this is very surface level story. That, that's actually a really good kind of parallel. It's it's you can you can love a cousin who you can see is clearly not living <laughs> wow. up to their potential. <laughs> you can love them fine. You could play some ping pong with them. You could talk about. Uh, you could introduce them to Daft Punk. Uh, and then I don't all, know why you needed but, this analogy. But ultimately be deeply disappointed that they're not living up to their potential. And that's how I feel about <laughs> Westworld. Yeah. Yeah. It's a right. fine hangout. It's but... not your It's not your daughter. It's a cousin. Exactly. Yeah. That's ding, ding, ding. Yeah. I would be upset if it was a daughter, but I, it's a cousin. What I mean, who am I? <laughs> I can't. All right. Any other thoughts on Westworld? I'm so glad that we're all watching it together because I don't know what I'd be without you guys. <laughs> uh, that is Westworld season three, episode seven. Let's spoil the Larry Sanders show episodes 14 and 15 of season three, the 14th floor and next stop bottom. Very arty heavy episodes, uh, it, which is nothing but a good thing for me. And in fact, uh, next stop bottom, not even that funny. I mean, they, they put some funny beats in, especially right at the end, uh, with the with the the gun lighter bit, uh, but yeah, it was it, it it got a little dark there for a little bit, as dark as Larry Sanders show gets. I, but 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 I think that's important because um, in order to uh, so so uh, forgive my philosophical bent right here, but like from an evolutionary standpoint, the reason we have laughter as a species is to communicate uh, to others of our tribe that we're safe. And so imagine you're out hunting with other hunters and then you hear a twig snap, all of you freeze. And then you're the first to recognize that it's a monkey and not a saber toothed tiger that snapped that twig. So you laugh and everyone else laughs and that tension's released. That laughter lives in the tension that comes before it. Um, and, and I feel like that's the main purpose of this episode is to give us a little bit of teeth to show us real despair and misery to make these, uh, ironically, we just talked about our frustrations with Westworld. Uh, what, what that lacks, uh, I think this has is, is real stakes, concrete, uh, pain, which makes the humor all the more delicious. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, I couldn't get it out of my mind that, uh, the woman who plays Darlene, uh, is Gary Shandling's his wife. ex-wife. Yes. And, uh, she is, you know, and, and you hear Hank saying all these things to Darlene about his failing marriage. And so I had to look the story for next stop bottom is by Gary Shandling, Paul Sims, and Judd Apatow, uh, the teleplay, the actual language is credited solely to Judd Apatow. Oh, that's mm. interesting. So you think that was a dodge? Uh, like, 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 please don't put our fingerprints all over the actual words being said. Especially because I'm making Hank tell Darlene all the things that I would say to my ex-wife. I don't know. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I might just be reading too much well, into and, it. And e even if it's not a case where he wants to dodge responsibility, it could be a case where he's like, I don't want to be seen like I, I, I don't even want it to be thought that that I'm doing this in that petty way. Uh, so I'd rather not have the credits. And this is, of course, in a strange kingdom where currency, you know, where credit is king. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I mean, that that was in my mind, but also, uh, nonetheless, uh, kind of an extra beat that I didn't, I wouldn't have expected. We got, we got Hank's wedding in last season. We got Hank's divorce this season, and it ended with you know Hank just kind of wigging out. 
I didn't think that was a tease to, hey, in two episodes, we're going to watch Hank hit bottom. He's going to hole up in a hotel room with with drugs and alcohol and prostitutes, and uh, you're going to watch the whole thing. And, you know, for ni- September 1994, this was incredibly edgy television that HBO uh, was doing. Well, and, and am I remembering right that that a big part of the prostitutes part was that he just wanted her to say nice things to him? Like like the the that real heartbreaking beat that you hear about from stories like uh, allegedly when uh, Chris Farley died you know he was just like I just want you to stay and cuddle with me, um, yeah maybe I'm misremembering I don't know I I, I guess uh, someone in our chat room is saying Gary Shandling and 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 uh, Laura Desette, uh were never married they were just partners so it was a breakup not a divorce whatever sure. point still stands yeah I don't know that that changes too much yeah i don't think that changes my uh, analysis at all i'll tell you what is awesome though is seeing Haley joel osmond uh did you instantly recognize him in in the 14th floor no i didn't really I had to, oh my I had to god the up. second yeah. he walked out i was just like are you kidding me that's amazing. i was like i saw him and i was I, well because he also recently was in another show i'm watching uh in a yes. in a cameo role yes i i was like that person looks really familiar but it i had to look it up and I was like, oh, crap. Like, and I felt kind of dumb that I didn't recognize no, it. No, I, I, I went down the rabbit hole to explain to my 12 year old, because we also watched the unnamed show uh, for an upcoming podcast. Uh, I had to explain how big a deal that cameo was. So I went back and showed her the trailer to The Sixth Sense. Uh, uh, once once you see him just a few years afterwards, it's like, that's Haley Joel Osment with a little Trump haircut. It's amazing. <laughs> it was really good, too. Like, He's talented kid at, at a very early age. Yeah, right? I was trying to I was trying to piece together how he landed all those lines because um, I don't I don't think he's reading off a of cue cards. I, I guess that was one of the talents that made him a good kid actor. I was yeah, no, just I, being I, able I to... was wondering that myself because it, there were no obvious cuts there for his yeah. lines. I mean, yeah. it's it's a fairly extended one one take shot. Yeah. Uh, the 14th floor, though, uh, the classic dispute with the the folks upstairs, and and, and there have been more than one of these over the years. Letterman with GE, of course, incredibly famous, and they all play out this way, where like, oh, come on, you guys, it was just a joke, uh, and and some ended with a little more serious apology than others. Uh, so I I don't know. I love I loved the most the thing I loved the most about this was Artie just lying to Larry. And oh, just sure. like everything's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll take it. And I, I when they when he said they're gonna fire me, I was fully expecting that to be BS, right? To that to be like, I this is how I will manipulate Larry into doing the apology. Like that is classic arty playbook. And then but then, then we didn't get that. Yeah. Uh <laughs> kind of a dark 14th floor, a kind of a very dark uh episode for Artie. You know, ending in his, you know, drunken. Oh yeah, rant I thought he was. I end. thought he was fake drunk. That, 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 uh, that's the, the other thing. Is not not just mm-hmm. that he was saying he was going to be fired, but I like I thought I thought he was going to walk out and say, yeah, the drunk act worked. You know, and then we didn't get that. Yeah, very. The only time it really felt like Artie was not in control when, really, that's all we ever see of him is com- almost completely in control of the show and of Larry. Well, and and yet every once in a while when they're doing the like the off, uh, you know, off campus party, he's the one making the salty dogs and gets drunk really fast. So, mm. you know, there's a lot of pain to Artie down below as well. He just keeps up a very solid professional pr- facade. It's a deep character. But weirdly, like, remember the episode with uh, Larry's old comedy writing partner? Uh, yeah, yeah. Supposed, like, like, like this episode dealt much better more realistically with with uh, the role of alcohol in in all of hollywood and all that stuff than than that mm-hmm. one did you know the other one was a cartoon where you just heard bottles clanking all the time and and everyone's saying you're drunk whereas like uh uh that fraying at the edges uh that that Artie shows i, th- I think was very believable and and again mm-hmm. speaks to part of what makes this so smart in in such good comedy is that there are real teeth and, and there's real pain lurking just beneath the surface of every laugh yeah, these were these were both really really solid episodes. I I enjoyed enjoyed them both quite a bit. Um, he, even if they were a little more serious, like you say, that that makes the comedy bits work uh, to the point where the end of Next Stop Bottom, where he slaps the gun on the table uh, with Larry, and it turns out to be a, a lighter, almost felt unbelievable in retrospect compared to everything else. 
like a, like it would have been in a better episode if like the gun had gone off at that moment. Yeah, <laughs> right or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on the Larry Sanders show? No, man. Just gets better and better and can't wait to watch the next ones. That's Larry Sanders show episode 1415 season three, the 14th floor and next stop bottom. Thanks all for hanging out with us, uh, for watching Spoiler in Time and supporting us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cord Killers is the place to go. Tell your friends, thanks for keeping us in business, and we'll spoil you again next time. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>